Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nate and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to sell with Amazon FBA. Now, quick note here, we're not selling you anything. There's no courses, there's no pitches. You don't have to worry about us going through here and just telling you to buy our like thousand dollar course. Look, the truth is you don't have to spend any money in order to learn how to do Amazon FBA. It's still very much alive and well in 2021 and we're going to show you everything that you need to know. This is a beginner's guide on Amazon FBA. We're going to give you as much information as possible in this video. So I recommend taking out a pen, taking out a piece of paper, taking some notes on this video. We'll leave some of the show notes down below, but like I said, we have nothing here to sell you. So just enjoy this, uh, take some notes, and I think it's going to be of quite a bit of value for you. So let's get started here. Uh, but it's important to note as well that this is not a get rich quick type of idea. Uh, while this is still very much alive and well, we know people who are selling hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of products on Amazon. And we've done this quite a bit ourselves. Uh, but this is not a get rich quick scheme. Okay, this is not something that tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to have $10 million from selling products on Amazon. This is very much a long Long process. So hopefully, if you're watching this video, it's with my hopes that maybe you already have a job or you're already in school, you already have something going on. And what I want you to do is hopefully start to do something like this on the side, right? Start to build it up over time. You start to learn from your experiences. And this is the best way to go about this rather than just trying to jump into it full time right off the bat, but rather build up over time, learn from your experiences over time, launch one product, then launch another one, then launch another one over the course of the next couple of months. That's what we would suggest doing rather than just hitting it running and, and, and just going out and trying to uh, make a ton of money within the next couple of weeks. It's going to be really difficult to do that. And we don't want to see you, you lose your shirt uh, by getting in over your head too quickly. Okay, so let's start here. Uh, but first of all, let's let's just discuss a couple of things that we're looking at here in, in the big segments. First of all, we're going to look at how to find products. We're going to talk a little bit more about Amazon FBA and essentially what it is. But then we're going to talk about how to find products, right? How do you find products? that have a lot of demand and not very much supply. I don't know if you've taken uh, any type of economics courses or, or studied economics, but you'll know that uh, you want to be in the position where there's not very much supply, but there's a lot of demand. We'll show you how to find those different types of products. There's a couple of great techniques that we have for that. Uh, and then we'll talk about how to actually source those products, right? How do we find the products that we can then go sell? How do we find manufacturers? Should we deal with trading companies? Should we go straight to the manufacturer? How do we get that over to America or wherever you're based in? Uh, and so we'll go over as much as we can in regards to sourcing products, buying those products. It sounds pretty scary by maybe ordering pallets of products from uh, some type of uh, country on the other side of the world, but it can actually be a lot easier and simpler once you get the process rolling. So uh, if at any point you feel intimidated from this, just know that uh, it's, it's going to take some time, okay? But uh, you take it one step at a time, you start to build this knowledge, uh, and, and you really can win. With this. So let's start off by uh, understanding fulfillment by Amazon. Amazon FBA, that's what it stands for. It's fulfillment by Amazon. Now, this is the most popular route for people who are selling on Amazon, especially in 2021. Uh, there's also another option though, if you don't want it fulfilled by Amazon, meaning that Amazon is actually shipping out the packages for you, you're not the one putting those packages in the mail. This is what you'll see with when people do Amazon FBA, you'll see this prime option as well. So they're shipping out from their warehouses, you're just the seller, so you're getting a cut there. Um, this is a great move for most people, but there's also something called uh, Amazon FBM, which is fulfillment by merchant, which is uh, essentially you can list something on Amazon and then you can ship that product out yourself. You can totally do that. I actually know a lot of people who might prefer to do that when they first start off selling on Amazon. Uh, and there's pros and cons to each one of these. Now, we'll be primarily talking about FBA, fulfillment by Amazon, where they ship it out. But we will touch on uh, FBM a little bit on if you want to ship those products out yourself. Now, the pros and cons of each of these, it's important to understand this. Because with something like FBA, maybe you'll save some time and actually you'll probably end up selling more from our experience, selling more when you do FBA because you have that prime shipping that's available in most cases. Uh, Amazon's shipping it for you. So it might end up saving you time as well. You don't have to run to the post office to ship those things out. 
The problem with Amazon FBA is that it can actually be a little bit more expensive uh, because Amazon does take quite a few fees. And you'll notice that as a common theme throughout this, that Amazon, they take a lot of fees in a lot of different areas. Uh, this is not without good reason. I mean, they are in a lot of cases promoting your product for you. The Amazon search engine is the largest search engine for shopping in the world. So when people wanna buy something, they go to Amazon uh, and Amazon can promote this product for you. So it's great to have that on there. Now, fulfillment by merchant, just very quickly to run over this, uh, it's probably going to save you some money in fees because you might be able to do this yourself. You don't have to pay all these various Amazon fees, but we find that you actually end up don't selling as much and people really do want to have that prime two day shipping included there. They don't wanna to have to pay an extra $5.95 for shipping. So we suggest going with FBA if you can, especially if the margins are still there. We'll talk about profit margins in just a minute as well. But let's get into the section here where we talk about finding products. How the hell do we find a product to sell on Amazon? Now, admittedly, it used to be a lot easier to find products with good profit margins five or 10 years ago selling on Amazon, but it's still very possible to find products like this. So one strategy that we could use, which is probably the beginner strategy, is just going through and randomly searching for things and kind of guessing. Uh, we used to do this actually way back when I used to sell a lot of products on eBay. What we would do is I, I would, anytime that I would buy something, I would uh, look at the product cost and then I would go and try to source the product and I would try to compare that and just see if I could get it for a lower price. This isn't the best method, right? Like if I go on here and maybe I'm, I'm thinking about selling uh, some type of uh, you know winter gloves, right? And I'm, I'm looking through here and I'm just trying to find something, right? This is going to be really difficult to just kind of go throughout this and find products without any type of software or any type of help because who knows, you know, okay, this is selling for $16.95, but is it possible to tap into this? It has a lot of reviews. It's already at the top here. These are actually sponsored. Um, and so what we recommend doing is not just going through here and blindly guessing on products. This is going to end up in just a really big fiasco for you. What we suggest doing is getting this piece of software called Jungle Scout. So Jungle Scout is a software, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. Uh, I don't know if we have any discount codes, but we'll leave a link to it down below uh, just so you can check it out if you would like to. Um, and I, like I said, I don't think that there is a discount code, but if there is one, we will include it down below. Um, but basically what Jungle Scout does, it's this beautiful piece of software. I absolutely love it. Uh, that really what it does is it'll show you the average monthly sales on average. They're obviously extrapolating a lot of this data. They don't have all of this data on hand, uh, but they're doing as much as they can to give you this information. This is the number one tool for sellers on Amazon. I mean, it's, it's an absolute beauty of a tool here, uh, but we can see the average price for winter gloves, $19.16. We can see the average amount of reviews, uh, but then we can also see the opportunity score here, uh, which is not very good. It's in high demand, but it has a lot of competition on this as well. So seeing this, you know, we're probably not going to want to go and start to try to sell winter gloves because it looks like this market here, it's already kind of flooded. The profit margins aren't that great. As you can see, some people are uh, on average might be losing money. Some people might only be making a couple of dollars. This is just all, of course, just an estimate from Jungle Scout. Uh, but this piece of software, you know, we can look through and see their price. We can see their average monthly sales. They're obviously selling a ton. You know, most of these are selling uh, 10, 20, 30, or 40,000 uh, gloves per month, products per month. So they're absolutely crushing with that. But it's going to be really difficult for us to tap into that. So we're not going to go with that one. But we want to actually, instead of just guessing here and using the software, which you could do, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go over to Jungle Scout, right? And so we're going to go over to Jungle Scout. I'm going to log in here. And we're going to actually look for the new opportunities, right? The product opportunities. There's a tab on this site that will allow us to do this. Um, if, if you don't want to go through and use this software, if you don't want to pay for the software, you can still do this. We'll talk more about that later in this video if you want to forego that. But I think it's probably going to be worth an investment uh, to be totally honest with you, at least to do some initial product research. So once this page, page loads here, I'm going to be able to log in. Uh, and then we're going to be able to look at new opportunities available to us here. So we're logged into the Jungle Scout dashboard here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to product research. I'm going to click down here and we're going to go to opportunity finder. And now once we have the opportunity finder, this is where we can start to discover uh, different types of products that we might want to consider selling. Now, I urge you to not just 
try to sell products that you love or that you use or that you're passionate about uh, because those products might not have good margins. We need to find products uh, that it doesn't matter if I like it or not. It doesn't matter if, if I myself am using that product. For example, you know, if I'm selling women's razors, I don't use women's razors, but that's okay because as long as it makes me some money and it's a good product uh, because at the end of the day, you know, if, if it's a bad product, you're not going to be selling on Amazon for very long. That's, that's true. Um, so now what we're going to do is we can select all categories, but I actually like to target a couple of different categories. So home and kitchen, for example, maybe office products is one that we found to be uh, pretty profitable. And you can go through here and decide which ones you want to go for. Uh, or we probably would suggest just selecting all here uh, for the time being to kind of get your feet wet and try to discover certain types of products. Now, once we do that, we can go and look at the average monthly units sold. I would suggest going for a product that's selling at least 100 uh, units per month. You know, if there's five per month because you're trying to sell some type of weird, obscure fly trap thing that nobody's ever really heard of, it's probably not going to be worth your time or anybody else's time uh, to, to spend energy on a listing that's not selling anything because nobody's searching for it. So for this, let's just set a, a minimum of 100 uh, monthly units sold. This is a pretty low number. You know, you could even set this closer to five or closer to a thousand if you would like to. But for our first product, we'll start with just 100 units. Now we can also look at the average monthly price. I would suggest setting a filter for this. The, t uh, uh, the reason for this is because if you're selling a product on Amazon for $10 or less, what we find is that your profits will be almost non-existent. Uh, meaning that Amazon, they do take a lot of fees, but there's also shipping. There's the cost of actually making the product, getting it to Amazon, them shipping it out, they're taking fees, um, and there's going to be product returns, there's going to be other problems. I would not suggest selling anything less than $10 with Amazon FBA. You're just not going to have good profit margins at all unless you're getting your actual product for like 10 cents and you're able to sell it for $10, which is pretty rare. Um, so we're going to set a minimum price for $10 and a maximum price we're going to set at about uh, $80 here, just so that we don't have too many products showing up. But also what we find is that if you have a product on Amazon for $500, you're going to get far fewer sales on that. Most people aren't going to be able to just convert on cold traffic. So we're going to keep that from a $10 to an $80 range. The other reason why we're keeping this, we're capping this uh, average monthly price at $80 is because if you're just starting to sell products on Amazon, you're probably not going to be able to afford to sell $500 sofas uh, and a thousand of those, you're, you probably don't have that much money to invest into something like Amazon FBA, right? So we want to keep this price a little bit low for our first uh, round of products that we are trying to sell. And you can go through and add some more filters on here if you would like. What I would do is suggest turning this competition down from very low down to about medium competition. Uh, they run a number of different factors in this to uh, decide what's going to be competitive and what's not competitive. But this is going to help you tap into those niches or those industries that everybody's not in, right? Like if, if we try to sell cutting boards, everybody's selling cutting boards. It's really hard to tap into that because so many people are searching for it. So we're going to go for something very low to medium competition. You can also look at seasonality as well, which is going to be important. Uh, Christmas just happened, so we probably don't want to sell a Christmas item or it, it could actually be a way to get into the market here. So now what, what we're going to do is we're going to click search because we've set our uh, different things here. So we're going to wait for this to load for just a second. And it looks like it just loaded here. So now we can go through here and we can look at all these different products that popped up based off of our search criteria for a product that we might want to sell on Amazon. So we can go through here and you're going to see ones that you just are not going to be relevant to you. So a Yankee candle, I, I'm not going to sell that because, well, I don't own Yankee candles. Um, so we're, we're going to go through here because what, what we're really going for in this case is we're probably trying to find something uh, that we can private label, meaning that uh, we can actually source from a manufacturer. We can slap our own brand name onto it and then we can sell it for a premium price. So, you know, this one's actually pretty interesting right here. Valentine Gnomes. You know, I've actually seen this a number of times. We were doing some product research uh, about two months ago back in November, or maybe those three months ago now, uh, back in November. And we we're looking at gnomes for Christmas. And it's just very interesting to see that for some reason, the gnome market doesn't seem very tapped into. And we're just using this as an example here for the purpose of this video. But let's say that we're just intrigued by this. So we can go ahead, we can click on Valentine gnomes. And we can look at the average units sold, right? Obviously, it's starting to pick up a lot. 1,621 units sold. 
in January so far. This is, of course, an estimate. This is going to be a seasonal item, so you have to decide if this is something that you really want to end up selling. But let's go ahead and let's start to look into this a little bit more, right? So let's actually search this on Amazon. So we're searching for Valentine gnomes on Amazon, and we can go ahead and we can look at what we have here. And what we have is a number of products that don't really have many reviews. I mean, take a look at this. They don't have many reviews, but they're averaging quite a few monthly sales. Now, this is, of course, an estimate. This might not be totally accurate, but it's very intriguing to see this, why there are so many gnomes being sold here, uh, and they're, they're getting quite a few sales, right? So th this might be a product that we're interested in trying to source and trying to sell. So now... One, one quick note here, uh, if, so we're going to use this as an example for this video here, sourcing gnomes and selling Valentine's gnomes. But the problem here is that I'm filming this video, we're creating this video uh, in January. And so if we wanted to actually do this, we should have been ahead of the trend, right? So because it's going to take a couple of weeks to find a manufacturer, to get those to Amazon, and then Amazon ships them out and to, and to build some reputation there. So if you're going to do something seasonal like this, uh, you, you're going to want to think many months out, right? So right now, it's January, I'm going to start thinking about maybe... 4th of July or Independence Day gnomes or summer gnomes and maybe Easter gnomes, right? Later on in the year so that I'm prepared for them. That's just a quick note there that I wanted to mention. So let's go back to Jungle Scout. And let's say that we're very interested in selling gnomes, right? Because they're selling quite a few gnomes here. Uh, it, it looks like this is a, a pretty good product to sell. So now that we've found a potential product that we want to end up selling, we've identified that there's demand for it, right? They're obviously selling thousands of Valentine gnomes per month, uh, and there, there, there seems to be quite a bit of demand for it as well. Okay, so now that we have identified that, what we're going to do is try to find a way to source that, and that's going to be in the next segment here. So assuming that you are using the Jungle Scout plugin here, uh, what we can do is we can go up to the, the Chrome extension, which we have installed here after we've searched for Valentine Gnomes. We can go ahead and click on it. And this is just another view that you can have here. So with an average of 1,672 monthly sales, uh, what we're really looking at here, though, is uh, the, the spread here on the different products that are being sold, right? So these are all different brands here, and they're all likely selling thousands of different gnomes, right? So they're obviously selling a lot here. Their monthly revenue uh, for an example here is well over $50,000. I guess a lot of people like gnomes. I don't know. Maybe old people... I wouldn't buy one of these, but some people obviously do, with an average price of $15.78. So we're probably not going to become multi-millionaires off of this one specific product because the margins might be a little bit low, but it could be a great way to tap into the market and start to build our reputation here. So what we can do now is we can go over to Alibaba. So this is Alibaba, and this is where we're going to source a lot of our products from. Uh, this is going to allow you to uh, connect directly with a manufacturer or in, sometimes, uh, in some cases, a trading company. So there's a difference between a manufacturer and a trading company on something like Alibaba, uh, and you're going to want to know the differences between these two. Now, a trading company, you're likely going to end up paying more for a product uh, because this is not actually a company that uh, actually makes your specific product, but you're actually just kind of buying it from them and they're like a middleman and then they go talk to the manufacturer and get it made for you. So it's it's not the best option. The good thing about uh, dealing with the trading company over a manufacturer is that their customer service tends to be a bit better from our experience. Um, but you really do want to probably go and find a manufacturer. Um, I have a lot of friends who do so much on Amazon FBA that they end up taking business trips over to China quite a bit, which to just be honest here, mo most of the products are going to be coming from China or from some different countries um, that have quite a bit of manufacturing inf infrastructure uh, in those countries. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's search for the product that we've just found on Jungle Scout. We might not still sell this, right? We still need to do more research and see how cheap can we actually source this product for. Now, one thing that we want to sort of use is like a quick and dirty rule of thumb that we like to do. It's called the rule of thirds. So let's say that we're looking back on these different Valentine's knowns um, and we're seeing that the average price is $15.78. So what we want to do here is if we're using the rule of thirds, which means that one third of your price here uh, is likely going to be going towards the cost of the product. So perhaps $5 or less we'd want to have for the product. One third of that goes towards 
Amazon, right? Amazon takes a lot of fees, their referral fee, their FBA fee, their long-term their long-term storage fee, uh, and also a seller membership of $39.99 per month. So they take a lot of fees. But with the rule of thirds, we have that first thing, which is the, the cost of the product. That might be $5. Then we have the Amazon fees, which could be another $5 or more. And then hopefully the other third can be our profit, which would be hopefully $5 in our pocket for this. So let's see if this is actually going to happen. Well, we can go back over to Alibaba here. And let's look for Valentine Gnome. And let's see what we can find here for Valentine Gnome, right? So let's, let's look this up here. So for Valentine Gnome, we're going to have a bunch of things pop up here. And this is a interesting looking creature of, of a gnome, but it looks like we can get them for about $2.63 per piece uh, with a minimum order of 500. Now this is probably from a trading company. Uh, we can go through here and, and, and look at it. Specifically, we can look at actually this company here, but let's scroll through and let's see if we can find something for a better price or just a better option here, right? So, you know, these actually look kind of cool, I suppose. Uh, and these are relatively cheap, $1.37. Um, we can go through here a little bit more. You know, is there anything that we really like? I kind of like these. I think these actually could sell pretty well. So let's go ahead and let's click on these and let's see what we're dealing with here. So this here is a trading company, as we can see, uh, based off of this right here, it says trading company. Um, so we're probably not gonna source them from here. We're gonna wanna find a manufacturer, uh, but let's go through here and let's just read a little bit about the company, right? And some of their different uh, things that they have available. So what we can do and what I suggest doing is ordering from at least three to five of these different manufacturers, or if you buy it from a trading company, you want to order these and source these from a couple of different ones. And when I say this, I don't mean you should be ordering thousands from each different supplier, but rather you're going to order a sample from each one of these companies, right? So go ahead through this. And what I think you should do and what we like to do is pick five different companies where we say, you know, this might be a good one here, or maybe we like this one here for only 20 cents. That's extremely cheap, a little bit too cheap in some cases. You want to be careful on how cheap they are because sometimes if you're just going for the lowest price, you might get some pretty bad quality. Um, but we're going to order uh, a sample from each one of these five. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to send a message to these companies. So we're going to go in here and we can send a message to each one of these companies, uh, reach out to them. We can contact them and say, hey, uh, th this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a thousand of these items. I'm looking for X amount of these items uh, to ship over to me so that I can sell them. Can you do it for this price? Blah, blah, blah. And can you also send me a sample? Is there a price for the sample? Because uh, sometimes they're going to charge you a little bit. Actually, in a lot of cases, it's free to get a sample from these companies. They might just ask that you pay for shipping so that they don't lose a ton of money sending out samples to pot a, a, a potential buyers. So go ahead and maybe look for five different products here that you can uh, experiment with. Then you're going to end up getting those to your home, wherever else. You're going to in inspect each one of those five different products that those companies sent you as a sample and then you're going to decide based off of the price based off of your negotiations with those companies which one you think is the one that you want to use for your FBA business. Once you make that decision, then we go through the process of actually putting in an order with one of these companies. Now, in most cases, we, we end up just wiring money to these companies. Uh, and in a lot of cases, you're going to do 30% uh, upfront, and then you're going to pay 70% once that product gets shipped. But you can, of course, negotiate these terms. I've seen people pay 50% upfront and then 50% once the product is shipped. Um, but that's really going to be the way that you can source products. You can deal directly with manufacturers if you want to private label something. Uh, for example, let's say that we're not selling gnomes, but let's say that we're selling like workout equipment. Uh, so let's just look up, right? Like workout, um, workout shorts, right? And, and we can find something like this, and then perhaps we can end up actually private labeling these, meaning that we can work with the manufacturer to slap our label on the side of these shorts or on the side of these leggings or anything else in here, right? And so uh, this is also another option that people like to do because this can actually build your brand as a whole, uh, and then you can end up selling these brands. I mean, I've had friends who have sold their brands. They've built businesses on Amazon FBA. They become very popular. People start to recognize that brand name, and then they're able to 
to sell this brand, just the IP, the brand name itself, for hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's a very reputable brand and they own some of those spots at the top of the list on Amazon searches because they've made this great branding for all their products. They've slapped their brand on there. They've worked with the manufacturer. So that's what we suggest doing for that. Um, but let's go a little bit deeper into this here. So once you discuss your different deals with the manufacturers or the trading companies that you're working with through Alibaba or through some other type of source, um, then what you're going to do is you're going to actually discuss how those products are getting shipped to you. This is an important step of the process because we have two different options. Unless the manufacturer is right down the road from you, uh, you're probably going to have to get this stuff shipped to you from the other side of the world in most cases. Uh, and in a lot of cases, this is coming from China. So we really have two big options here. The first option is to uh, have this product shipped to you uh, via uh, by sea, right? So if, if, if you're shipping products by sea, we find that the average price that it's going to run you from just our experience here tends to be roughly like 25 cents to 50 cents per pound. It really depends on what you're selling and how much space it takes up as a whole as well. Um, but you can end up uh, uh, getting a lot of products over uh, by sea for relatively cheap in terms of shipping. The problem here, if you're getting your products shipped from the manufacturer to Amazon uh, by sea. The problem here, it can take a pretty long time. I mean, we're talking a couple of weeks. These are coming over on big ships across the ocean, across the Pacific. It's going to take a lot of time. In some cases, over a month we've seen. So that's the problem with having your product shipped uh, from your manufacturer to, to Amazon uh, by shipping it by sea. Now, the faster way to do this is by air. The problem with air though, as you'd expect when you're getting it in like five days, rather than a month is that it's going to end up costing you more. We see that this can end up being closer to like a dollar or two dollars per pound. But of course, like I said, it does depend on the uh, overall space that the product takes up as well. Um, now, you're also going to want to make sure that you have an FN SKU barcode on that so that Amazon can send those out. We can go more in depth on that in a later video. We'll do like a follow up here uh, to kind of touch on a couple of things that maybe you would like us to go over. Um, but also, please let us know down below in the, in the comment section if there's something else you would like us to elaborate on more. I'm trying to cover as much as I can here, so I, I hope you can understand that. But what I want to do actually is take you over to the Amazon Seller Central here uh, to show you around a little bit and so that you can get started with this. Now, the thing we have to know about this is, like I said earlier, Amazon, they like to take their fees. And one of the fees that they take uh, is an overall seller fee just to even allow you on their platform. So you can either have the individual plan here or you can have the professional plan as an Amazon seller. Now, pretty much everybody that I know has the professional plan, which is going to be $39.99 per month. Um, or you can do the individual plan. Now, the problem with the individual plan is that you're paying per item sold. This can really end up costing you a lot of money. So, you know, maybe you want to start with the individual plan at first when you just get started because you're not selling many products. But once you start to sell like a dozen products or more, then you would want to switch over to the professional plan as an Amazon seller. But I do suggest you go to this page. Uh, we'll try to link to it down below uh, and go ahead and look through some of their different uh, things that they're taking here, their different fees that Amazon takes. Takes. They actually help you estimate your Amazon sales margin. So you can go through and look at the different referral fees that they have, right? So every time that somebody's buying a product, it depends on the category in which they're buying the product, but you're basically paying Amazon or somebody else uh, as a referral fee for bringing somebody to your product. Remember, Amazon's one of the largest search engines in the world. So you're going to end up paying a commission to other people or companies in order to uh, actually have people buy your products, right? So here's just a nice list of all the different things, right? If we're selling beauty products, we're paying, uh, it looks like 8% for products uh, with a total sales of $10 or less, and then 15% for more items. What you're going to notice though is that the general trend is that these referral fees can be about 15% of our total uh, price that we're selling these items for. So keep that in mind. Some can be lower, closer down to about 8%, even in some cases, computers only 6%. But in a lot of cases, you can end up paying 15% as a referral fee to Amazon. Okay. So once we've done that, let's talk about what makes a good listing because we're going to wrap up here soon, but we want to go over what makes a good listing here. So let's go back to these products here. Let's go back to the gnomes and let's take a look at some of these gnomes that are selling, right? So let's go ahead and let's look at these uh, gnomes. Let's go to the first ones that are popping up that are not sponsored. So let's take a look at these right here. 
this is a two pack of these little gnomes. Now, what they're doing here is, is we can look through and we can see that they have quite a few words in their uh, title. This is something that we've been doing for so long. You want to stuff a lot of keywords into your title. This is going to be a great tactic. Uh, if you just had a title that was Valentine's Day, gnome, and that was it, there's no other title to it, uh, you're going to end up missing out on a lot of opportunity. So you want to do some keyword stuffing here, as many as you can that are relevant keywords. Uh, if you want to learn more about what keywords you should be using, you can do two things. You can look at your competition and you can say, oh, well, I'm going to borrow some of these ideas, right? Don't copy. Don't totally copy other sellers. That's just not very cool. You don't want to be that person. But you can borrow some ideas, right? You can switch around the order. You can decide, you know what, I'm not going to have Santa doll in there, but I, uh, I am going to change this to Valentine doll perhaps or something, you know, just, just start to change things up there. Um, and you can borrow those or you can go back to Jungle Scout and you can go up to your keywords and you can start to look for different types of keywords, right? So keyword scout, and we can start to look for things that are related to that. So we can type this in. Let's look up Valentine gnome and let's see what comes up here and we can search for it. Oh, and it looks like you actually need to have a uh, higher a expensive one that we don't have here. So never mind. <clears throat> so once you've stuffed in quite a few keywords into your title, you're also going to want to look at your description here. Now, this one's very interesting. I've, I've never seen emojis really in descriptions very much, but I, I actually kind of like it a little bit. Um, this description is not too bad. They're obviously giving you quite a bit of information, but there's definitely a lot going on here. What we actually like to do, let's see if we can find a different one here, because what we like to do for our descriptions here, yes, the bullet points are very good, but what we like to do is have all caps uh, for the first couple of words and then follow it up, right? So th they chose to use brackets here. This is also another option, but what we do is, for example, we might say, Perfect Valentine's Day gift, all caps, right? It's, it's, it's all in caps. And then the following sentences are in regular text, how you would normally see it, right? So this is not bad. I like how they're doing this. Uh, you can think about having different types of pictures as well. Amazon does want you to have your main photo as a white background for this. So keep this in mind. You're going to want a white background for this. Uh, if you're looking for ways to get pictures of your products, there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, you can end up actually paying people. You can use Fiverr. You can use Upwork. You can send these products to photographers uh, or models and have them take some photos with your products. I would suggest doing that uh, because it does help with conversions when you actually have people holding your product or using your product. We see this especially with different types of fitness products. It works extremely well, right? Like if you're selling athletic shorts, you're going to want to have something besides just a white background picture. You want to have some photos of people wearing your shorts in action so that people can kind of relate to it and we find it does sell quite a bit better that way. So uh, let's see what else they have here and what else we can use as an option. Now, I want to show you another cool thing that we can do that most people don't tell you, which is when you scroll down and you look at this frequently bought together tab, this can be some secret sauce here, okay? Because what we can do is we can look at the items that are bought together and we can actually end up creating a separate listing that has both of those bundled together, which can save people a lot of money, right? So what if we end up selling a product that has both gnomes and whatever the hell this thing is. It looks like a, uh, it's a happy Valentine's Day heart wooden wall decoration, right? So what if we ended up making our own product and actually bundling both of these together, selling them as one item where they get these gnomes and also this wooden happy Valentine's Day and this love thing because people want to do like an all-in-one. They buy some decorations for Valentine's Day, so they're buying all three of these. So we could bundle these together and make it one product and see people who are buying all three of these, they're paying $42. We can end up selling this for less, maybe $30 as a bundled deal. So that's a cool thing that a lot of people don't tell you about. We've seen a lot of success with something like that. But then we can scroll down and we can look a little bit further into this. The question part, very important. If you have people asking questions, you want to be fast with your response time. This helps out a lot of other people, not just the people asking the questions, but prospective buyers in the future as well. And then also the most important thing by far is going to be the reviews. I don't know about you, but this is the one thing that I look at 
all the time. I want to see the reviews, if they're good or bad. I personally rarely buy anything that has less than a four or a three and a half star review. I just won't buy it. So you want to make sure that you're selling good quality products and you're getting reviews from your customers. Now, you can't just go out and ask your customers and say, hey, uh, if you like the product, make sure you review it. If you don't like the product, don't review it. You cannot say that. Um, so what you want to do is you can say, hey, don't forget to review the product. Um, and you can just do this by putting like a little piece of paper in each one of the products that you're shipping out. You can have your manufacturer do this for you if you would like to uh, when they're bundling these together and just say, you know, here's the contact information. If you have an issue with the product, uh, you know, feel free to leave a review if you'd like to. Uh, that's one thing that we've seen that helps get a lot of reviews. But let's actually talk about how to tap into the market, basically how to start selling, right? Because a lot of people find issues with this. They find it's very difficult to start to actually actually sell product because it's difficult to tap into it, right? Like how do they get to the top spot on Amazon when somebody searches for something? It's really hard to get that spot. So there are basically two strategies that we use to get our product to the top and start to sell products immediately, even if we don't have a lot of reviews for people to base uh, their decisions off of. Now, the two strategies are as follows. The first one is probably going to be, I, I would say, your easiest one, but it's going to cost you some money. And that's basically PPC, which is pay per click, um, which is going to get you towards the top. So let's say, for example, that somebody is looking for cutting boards and you're, you happen to be selling cutting boards, right? So if somebody's looking for cutting boards, what's going to happen here? Well, Amazon, they like to make their money. And so uh, these ones at the top here, these are all sponsored. These are all sponsored listings for cutting boards. So you could sponsor your post. This is going to cost you money. You might lose money on this, but in turn, you can end up getting some decent reviews. So it's an option. It's not the best, but it's something that, you know, maybe if you have some money to spend, you have some money to invest into this, you could consider sponsoring your post and getting it to the top just so you can start getting some reviews. Maybe once you get five, six, seven reviews, you feel like you don't have to really have it sponsored anymore because it will already do well on its own. But that is one strategy to start to get some reviews, to start to get some sales. But keep in mind, if you're sponsoring it, it's costing you money, you're probably not going to be making nearly as much. And in some cases, you might end up losing money, which is not the overall long term goal. Um, now, the other option for you to do is to basically undercut everybody else who's selling the products so that you can end up positioning yourself higher uh, on the list and then eventually raise your prices once you get those reviews and once you get that kind of credibility. Uh, this is a tactic that I've, I've used for many, many years uh, and it works pretty well. The issue with this of undercutting your competition is that you might end up forcing your competition to also cut their prices. Because let's say that uh, everybody in here is selling cutting boards for you know, $20, right? We're seeing a lot of cutting boards for $25, uh, $19, right? We're seeing a lot of cutting boards for those price ranges. Let's say you go in here and you start selling cutting boards for $12. What's going to happen? You might sell a ton of cutting boards. Your profit margins might be pretty bad. They probably are bad. You might only make like a dollar or two. Um, but now your competition is going to look at that and say, well, wait a minute, we're losing a lot of money here because we, we could have been getting way more sales. So they start to lower the prices as well to compete with you. And then everybody kind of ends up losing because you drove the prices down. So you want to be careful with that. Really, the strategy here is low price for the first maybe dozen sales, the first two dozen sales. They write some reviews, you get some sales going, then you can raise the price. That's a tactic that I've always used. But just be careful on how long you leave that low price in there. I mean, we have brought items into the market uh, where we've lost money on the first 100 items that we sold. We end up lost money on purpose so that we could position ourselves in a good spot on Amazon. A little bit of a risky move, um, but it's something that, that does work if you know what you're doing. All right, everyone, so I would love to go more in depth on this. If you wanna see an even longer tutorial, really getting into the nitty gritty of like sourcing products and manufacturers and the types of messages that you send to those manufacturers, let me know in the comment section below. Go ahead, follow me on Instagram if you guys want to connect a little bit. I'll try to respond to you as much as possible. Thanks for watching the video. Like I said, guys, you don't have to pay any money for any of this information. Go ahead, find more information like this online for free. Don't pay for those thousand dollar courses. They're just not worth it. We never did. Uh, and I don't think you have to either. So thanks for watching. Hope everybody has a great day and I'll see you next video.